Hello everyone, and this is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling on May 17, 2016. And, you know, right off the bat, I, I think there was a lot of good things on this show that day. Almost, not completely, but almost nullified most of it by how they ended the show. Uh, so let's go through everything. First of all, uh, the aspect of Drew Galloway and Bobby Lashley fighting and brawling right before the show, or like right as the show began... I really like this. It, it grasps even more about how much these two don't like each other. You know, you can't really have these two guys around each other backstage in any way uh, before their matches and anything like that. I like this aspect. Uh, I thought it was a good way of going in, in there. So, to begin the show, at least out in the arena, you have Willow come out. And, uh, and you have this Willow in like a... Well, first of all, they have these weird little filters throughout the thing. Like they did with New Day with the time machine thing. It actually kind of constrides with the, the character and everything in that sense. And you have um, Willow talking about how he's free from Jeff Hardy and everything like that. Uh, and uh, Jeff interrupts, calling this guy a fraud, uh, you know, coming out there calling this guy a fraud that Willow's my creation and everything like that. You, why are you doing this? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, on that sense, even going to the aspect of calling him Shadow Willow, I like that one. I like the aspect of the Shadow Willow uh, being in there. I thought it was a great idea uh, on that aspect. Uh, this led to a real quick match between the two of them. Jeff Hardy, after the match, gets attacked by another Willow, and a third Willow comes out, revealing himself to eventually be Matt Hardy in like this insanely crazier variation of him, uh, talking about how you may have left me broken, but you didn't finish the job, Jeff, and that's your only mistake right now. I I really, really like this segment. I thought it was really well done between the two of them, and uh, just a great way of going and continuing on into the... Uh, uh, continuing on with that feud down the line, which more likely will be at the uh, Sacrifice pay-per-view, I would assume, in, in some way, shape, or form. But like I said, really good segment. I felt that was, uh, came off really good here. Uh, Velvet Sky meets up with Ali, uh, who's apparently a new secretary or apprentice for Maria. Uh, first of all, good banter between the two of them. Uh, this eventually leads to Ali notifying Velvet that she has a match with Sienna, and if she loses, she's fired. And uh, I believe Velvet Sky was leaving the company, so this was get, uh, this was basically their way of get writing her off of television at this time. Um, overall, that match was okay. It wasn't anything bad. Uh, it lacked any type of it lacked any type of drama really to it. Uh, because this match, for the most part, was based around Sienna dominating, showing how dominant she is and everything like that. And when you have someone with, like, their job on the line and everything in that sense, usually you want to kind of build the drama before they either win or lose. And you just didn't really get that feeling here. That was one thing that they kind of missed out on. And in the end, it uh, doesn't really show, it really didn't end out to be all that much in the end. Though Velvet, I believe, like I said, left, the, it was uh, leaving the company to begin with. So we'll see where she, where she goes or if she's just done with wrestling all, all around uh, in that sense. So uh, overall, it did what it needed to do. It, got, it probably gets Sienna over as more of a monster in, in this case and being the enforcer for Maria uh, for Maria in there. And so it'll do, it'll do that benefit in the in the long run, which is, an okay, which is okay in this case. But when you have that, you know, if you lose your fired stipulation, you usually want to get a little bit more of the drama of the match there, which you didn't really get at all in this case. Uh, you had Dixie Carter backstage, uh, basic announcement for the uh, world uh, for the world title match, which she makes it a lumberjack match. And my thoughts going through my head is like, well, we know where this is going, <laughs> and I I've never been a big fan of lumberjack matches. And I'll talk about that a little bit later on, more towards the end of the video as well. And uh, so we'll just continue on there. You have uh, Michael Bennett. They're doing this segment at some kind of resort and everything like that. And here's the aspect. He says everything he wanted to say there about, you know, how EC3 has to be on this road to redemption. And he has to be 
uh, that he's looking on to the future about winning the world title, being the longest reigning champion, being a Hall of Famer, and everything in that sense. You get that in this video. And then immediately afterwards, he says it all in the ring again. Okay, in the terms of timing, not bad. Good lines, though. I liked, what the, uh, I liked where they went with that. Uh, with that aspect, and of course, uh, this time around, they're trying to build up more heat towards Michael Bennett, which they did a really good job of, you know, because he wanted to call out a Hall of Famer, but uh, in the terms of a TNA Hall of Famer, but there's only one Hall of Famer on the roster, or still with the company, and that being Earl Hebner. So they did that match more to build heat. Uh, EC3 comes out for the save after the match, and this is where he uh, where he announces it's like your second match in the Road to Redemption is against Tyrus, and it's a last man standing match. Um, and that match was up next. Uh, so good story in the terms of building there, but so far what you've seen uh, is almost like a semi-opposite. The matches kind of haven't been all that much. The story building's been pretty good in that, in this sense, though. So you have the story building there continuing on the road to redemption, and the last ring standing match with Tyrus and EC3. Um, it felt kind of rushed. Uh, I'm not gonna lie here. It really felt like it was a rushed match. In that sense, in the terms of a last man standing match, because they got to those uh, those like deep count spots really early in the match, and it ended relatively quickly as well. Uh, so, it, in that sense, not, it wasn't a bad weapons match in that sense because they had some really good spots in there. I just felt it was rushed a bit in, in that inside of there. But again, did what it needed to do to continue on this whole road of redemption thing for EC3 at the time. So, we'll see how they continue on with that. As a matter of fact, they do semi-continue on with it later on in the show, after the, um, after the next two segments. Uh, you had Trevor Lee and uh, Andrew Edit going up against DJ Z and Eddie Edwards. Now, granted, uh, I would say this tag match, and now this could, like, some more could have happened during that week that I missed. Uh, of TNA Impact and I happen to actually happen to see that show but what I made note of here is that this was a good match but it didn't feel like it did anything to the story between uh, Eddie Edwards and uh, Trevor Lee and Shane Helms which I love how they're calling it the X Division Dynasty uh, like these two guys that they have with them like Trevor Lee and Andrew Abbott they're really good in the ring but and they have like good facials and everything like that but it was proper of putting like Shane Helms with them because at least you have somebody who can at least halfway decently do a promo with them because otherwise these guys look and feel bland in, in, in every sense of the word. Uh, they're good in the ring, but they are kind of bland everywhere else. But uh, overall, uh, match was good, uh, but it didn't feel, I didn't feel like it did anything towards their story in, in that sense. Um, DJ Z seems to have like a new a sporty a new look of like a semi bejeweled mask and, uh, uh, and headphones to go along with everything and ends out getting the victory in the end so uh, overall good match nothing that I would but nothing else really to write home about up next was Eli Drake doing the fact of life segment and his guest was Bram first of all this fact of life segment I think is just like semi the dumbest idea possible that they could come up with but um, but it works on the aspect of one that's one of uh, that's one of Eli Drake's catchphrases two Eli Drake is great on the microphone this guy makes this segment work even though it just doesn't feel like it should work at all um, the whole dummy button thing, all that kind of stuff, I, I, I don't necessarily like it all that much, but he, again, makes it work because they have the button say, dummy, yeah, and then he'll say, yeah, one more time. It, it, it kind of actually works in that sense for it. Um, and, of course, Eli Drake, again, like I said, great on the mic. Uh, berating fans on that sense, berating all the other wrestlers. He calls out Bram, talk, and they start talking about the King of the Mountain title. So this is how they're going to start the whole aspect behind the briefcase and what is eventually going to probably or not uh, will eventually happen with uh, Eli Drake cashing in the briefcase and as a matter of fact they even tease it here uh, inside, of, inside of here right now 
or inside of that uh, segment as well that the, he would cash in at that moment and then kind of backing off at the end. So, uh, overall, not a bad segment. Like I said, I, I think the segment and the name of everything or just like the aspects of the whole talk show that they go for there is not necessarily the best idea, but it's made a little bit better by Eli Drake and what he can do on the microphone. Uh, and we'll see how this uh, continues on with him and Bram down in the very near future. Uh, so, uh, actually, you had a backstage segment before the main event, which was EC3 and uh, in Michael Bennett. And Michael Bennett is like, uh, EC3 thinking is like, okay, I got through Tyrus and I got through Rockstar Spud. Those are done. Why don't we have our match? And, of course, it's like, and of course, in this case, you have uh, Michael Bennett's like, no, you got one more person. And it's that person that took the World Heavyweight title from you. And I like how even uh, how Michael Bennett even points out. It's like, you know, it's, and it also seems like, uh, you know, Matt Hardy is a little bit crazier at this time. And making it a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a, uh, what is it, more doubt in EC3's mind. The only downside is because you know this is probably going to lead into a match at the Sacrifice pay-per-view. Is that... They're going to pin Matt Hardy relatively quick, unless they do some kind of disqualification thing. Uh, I kind of hope they go for a disqualification thing, because I don't think after this change in character that they need to pin Matt Hardy or have him get defeated in any or like get defeated in any other way other than DQ until it's him and Jeff again uh, at some point. So we'll see what they do with that match, and we'll see how everything works out with... Uh, with where they're going with this EC3 Michael Bennett storyline. And this leads to the main event of the night. Man, do I hate Lumberjack matches. I, I just don't like them. And a matter of fact, I'll put it out I'll put it out here. The Lumberjacks meant nothing in this match. They did they did very little, like you had the heels kind of attack Drew Galloway and everything like that on the back in the back like once or twice. But otherwise they really did Nothing for this match, other than cause the DQ finish. That's all they did. That's all the Lumberjacks did. This was a good one-on-one -on -one match between Drew Galloway and Bobby Lashley. Having the rest of them in this overbooked, contrived mess afterwards was just pointless. Absolutely pointless. Matter of fact, like... You know, because, because, like I said, you had all those other story build-ups throughout the entire time. They could have left it at that with uh, Matt Hardy and, and Jeff Hardy, uh, with Eli Drake and Bram. They even throw that in there. Uh, you had DJ Z inside of there. Like, these guys literally, it meant nothing to their storylines other than getting a spot in. And... And, and, like, they'll probably never really even use anything inside of this. And it almost kind of uh, negates the aspect of before the matches. Like, th there was a couple spots beforehand that they show great training videos between, uh, with uh, Bobby Lashley and Drew Galloway. They both get, like, some really uh, uh, good training video. That, like, they do something for Bobby Lashley that's, like, all quiet and showing how hard he's training to uh, get into this match. And... You have Drew Galloway cutting a promo during his, uh, during his time, and I thought it was great. Uh, but the match itself was good, and they could have just gotten to a DQ finish, like the aspect of these two not liking each other so much that they just brawl or do something to cause a DQ between the both of them would have been a lot better than the contrived mess that they did in this overbooked, pointless spot with the Lumberjacks at the end. It, that was the only reason why they were out there. There was no point in actually doing this. And like I said, uh, all the good stuff that they had done doesn't necessarily fully get naked by that by this one bad spot. But it does take this one down a notch. It does take this show down a notch on the aspect that they decided, let's just go with an overbooked mess. Uh, let's go with Russo booking. We'll call it that. We'll call it that for that one. Um, by, by, I mean, Russo booking is like, oh, we're just going to cause a DQ or something in that sense. Uh, when there's no real reason for it, and you can get to that in a better 
uh, well, n not only in a simpler way, but in a better way than where they did. So overall, outside of the whole aspect of a lumberjack match uh, it, inside of there, and that they could have gotten to that DQ finish that you would probably need so they can make this go to sacrifice, uh, this was a relatively good show. This was actually a relatively good show. Outside of that one little thing at the end, uh, this was a relatively good show and thoroughly enjoyable. So, that is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling. I thank you guys for watching, and have a great day.